M11, the Madrid train bon bombings, lessons learned and not learned. Uh, looking at the March uh, 2004 attacks of Al-Qaeda or affiliates in Spain, uh, and the, these bombings of these trains, and also what the, the government response was that it, it was to that in counterterrorism and other uh, procedures moving forward. So we look at a little bit of the introduction and history here. Now, the history could start back a lot further with regard to Spain and the lead up to the attack, but I'll start in the 1990s, uh, really with the invasion of the, the Gulf, the Persian Gulf, the Gulf War, or what might be called Iraq War One, 1990 through 91, after the Iran-Iraq War, the 1980s, Iran, uh, Iraq invades Kuwait and gets into this uh, skirmish with them because of the weakening from the Iran-Iraq war. And the United States gets involved and moves in troops into the Arabian Peninsula. And this is seen as a, a short war. It was seen uh, by many as a, a victory, a quick victory that repelled Saddam Hussein and his armies out of Kuwait. Uh, an ally in the region. However, uh, what this did was brought an unprecedented number of troops into the Arabian Peninsula uh, that had not been there since the time of, really since World War II. And that great resentment of foreign and Christian invaders uh, occupying what mu uh, Muslims view as the, one of their holy lands the Saudi Arabia in particular. Uh, Osama bin Laden, as most people don't know, uh, was talking with the Saudi elites, the Saudi royals at the time, and offering to gather together an army of his uh, battle-hardened Mujahideen, who had just uh, fought through the war in Afghanistan against the Soviets, uh, previously, and he wanted to fight a jihad against Saddam Hussein. He even said, I want to fight against Saddam, an infidel. I want to establish a guerrilla war against Iraq. Uh, Saudi Arabia uh, elites, not the, the people themselves, wanted to invite in uh, American forces who would establish bases in the land, repel Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait, and then the bases in that region never left. Now, this is uh, hugely problematic because for Muslims, for foreigners to occupy the this land with military force and exercise control in the region uh, draws a huge amount of uh, resentment, and this is a... a attack on one of their, their holy places. Now, Osama bin Laden also gets further radicalized from this. His goal has always been to uh, build and establish a pure Islamic caliphate, that is an Islamic state in that region. Uh, but to do that, the secular, secular, the, the Muslim uh, leaders of that region would have to be removed out of the way because People were not uh, going along with the plan of the establishment of a caliphate. And he knew he didn't have the power to remove them. He knew that his, his influence was only so limited. So his goal was to have provoke the United States or other powers into trying to remove them from the region. That's where, where Spain comes in later on. And so he becomes further radicalized at this point in the 1990s because the Saudis agreed to bring in the United States and the United States military presence and foreign occupation never leaves. Bin Laden then starts uh, perpetrating terrorist attacks in the 1990s. During the time of the Clinton administration, there's a policy of uh, dual containment of Iran and Iraq, uh, as opposed to arming both sides against each other, even with chemical weapons, as happened during the Iran-Iraq war, in which the United States supported Saddam Hussein against Iran. And then George Bush realized after the defeat of Saddam Hussein in the Gulf War that to totally topple Saddam's regime would allow 
I ran a regional advantage. And so he allowed Saddam Hussein to continue. <clears throat> and Clinton followed a policy called dual containment, trying to contain them both. This involved uh, sanctions, the economic restriction of goods, uh, which caused hundreds of thousands of, of uh, civilian deaths in the region in order to put pressure on the leadership, um, although that didn't uh, wasn't effective. There were also regular bombings, maybe every, I want to say, four to five days throughout the 1990s. Uh, the Al-Qaeda terrorist attacks began in 1995, some, somewhat disputed. There was some you know, before that and things, but uh, began in earnest in 1995, which would lead to the attacks of 9-11, the London bombings and the Madrid, uh, Spain attacks. Al-Qaeda uh, threatened to increase the lethality of uh, attacks if foreign policy demands were not met. Now, Al-Qaeda's goal stated... Uh, publicly, stated privately in communication, and also recognized as uh, a somewhat worthy goal by their constituents, by people that they were seeking to reach with their messaging, has always been the removal of the U.S. and allied military presence from the Arabian Peninsula. That's always what they have messaged and there's no reason to believe that they aren't telling the truth because, again, these things were also said in private communications that they didn't expect anyone to see. And in uh, polls of people in Saudi Arabia and other regions agree, if not with uh, suicide terrorism, uh, as is the case with, with most or many people in that region, they do agree with the goal of removing the foreign occupation of the American bases and other uh presence that, that dominates the region and dictates uh, what will happen in that region. So Al-Qaeda's uh, demands throughout the 1990s have been remarkably consistent. They promised to increase the intensity of their attacks, also threatening the American and allied homelands, which happens in Spain as well. Uh, because of the occupation of uh, the Arabian Peninsula, sanctions and bombings against Muslims in Iraq, uh, also, the invasion of Iraq in 2003 that is followed with support by the Spanish and then also unqualified support for Israel at the uh, expense of the, the Palestinian uh, Palestinians in the region. These, this has always been al-Qaeda's uh, stated purpose and goal. Uh, then the attack itself in March 11, 2004, just after 7.37 a.m. at Otaka, uh, which I'm probably not, my accent's probably not right on that. Uh, the first bomb goes off. Uh, others go off. There were bombs put in rucksacks and placed onto the train. These were not suicide attacks. Uh, however, they were. They do bear the resemblance and some of the ideology and coordination efforts of those who uh, do perpetrate suicide terrorism. 191 civilians were killed, uh, 1,750 people were in, injured, and this is considered Spain's worst ever terrorist attack. It's their uh, equivalent of 9-11. They've never really had a terrorist attack like this one before. Now, it was done by Al-Qaeda or affiliates. Again, we want to be distinct in what we, we call them. We don't want to make mistake as some often do between the Taliban and Al-Qaeda um, and blur those lines. However, with a lot of these things, uh, there are just different goals, different operational forces, but the same ideology informing it. And that would be true for uh, Al-Qaeda later on, Al-Nusra, others that, that had some wanted to do terrorism in foreign lands for the same reason. And some wanted to do uh, terrorism and perpetrate attacks and fight wars in the region of the Middle East, like in Syria and Iraq. So same ideology informing it, different strategies. Uh, video cassette was produced with a spokesman claiming responsibility. Uh, Al Afghani uh, said, we declare our responsibility for what happened in Madrid exactly two and a half years after the attacks on New York and Washington. It is a response to your collaboration with the criminals Bush and his allies. This is a response to the crimes that you have caused in the world and specifically in Iraq and Afghanistan. And there will be more if God wills it. So this was the translation done 
uh, presented on ABC, uh, on BBC, talking about what the motive was, the invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan, and they held Spain responsible. If they couldn't uh, go for the, accomplish their goal with the, the biggest, what they saw to be the threat, the United States, they would try to take the willing out of the coalition by perpetrating this attack. So coalition forces had joined the United States to invade Iraq in 2003. Spain had never had a terrorist attack for this point. Spain had several uh, modern internal security structures to prevent terrorism. So in terms of uh, what they did that was good, they had things in place that could have been uh, effective against uh, against terrorism. And, and probably some of them were to prevent terrorism. But it's, it's misunderstanding the causes of terrorism. A lot of misunderstanding thinks that terrorism is always transnational, that it's always uh, Muslim, that it's always this or that. But uh, a lot of that also doesn't allow for the, the security uh, to prevent terrorism to be very effective. Um, even the surveillance of metadata uh, cannot be very effective because as people, metadata can be things informationally and market research and things like that. But after people start doing certain things, people change their tactics. It also becomes more difficult because uh, as with these terrorists in uh, Spain, with uh, many around the world, London, the, the Paris attacks by ISIS in, uh, in 2015, these are these are homegrown people. They're, they're people of divided loyalty. They're people who are normal citizens, uh, living their everyday lives, usually, surprisingly to many people, fairly secular. They're not uh, usually the more devoted in their uh, Muslim religion. They're usually educated, they have families, but usually what they have empathy for is the uh, what's going on in uh, homelands that they prize, where family lives, friends live, places like Iraq, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, and they empathize with the idea of wanting to remove that foreign occupation. Foreign occupation also is the greatest single predictor of suicide terror. Uh, all those other uh, controls and variables being absent, if an area is occupied by a foreign force, that is if a military, uh, that especially if it has a different religion, speaks a different language, has a different culture, occupies somewhere, uh, meaning they exercise military and political control in that region that seems to be some sort of threat to the culture of that society, that's where you'll start to see suicide terrorism. Uh, before the 2000s, the greatest perpetrator of suicide terrorism was not Muslims, it was the, the uh, tigers, tigers of Tamil Eileen or the Tamil Tigers. They uh, were a group in Sri Lanka that was Marxist Leninist, meaning they were atheists in their ideology, but they were responding against foreign occupation. Uh, where we see Muslim terrorism, Islamic extremism, is only after there has been foreign occupation in the region, which we start to see very uh, clearly after the occupation of uh, the Arabian Peninsula starting really in the 1990s. And then going on even more so after the invasion of Iraq in 2003, the invasion of Afghanistan in 2001. Afghanistan and Iraq didn't have any cases of suicide terrorism uh, before this. You see a trend of increasing suicide terrorism in these regions that are being occupied, not so much with Muslims uh, around the world. You see them focused on, on these regions and even outside attacks uh, coming from these, uh, their, their motivation being these reasons. And then after the backing down of forces, the backing down of the occupation, these regions, you see this decrease in suicide terrorism, as I'll show. But anyway, the point of that is in Spain, a lot of misunderstanding at, before the attack, but there's a lot of uh, these structures in place, but it can't catch necessarily all of those things because there's not necessarily always a profile for that type of uh, suicide terrorist. Uh, if you're looking for certain things, you can find them, but they're not always going to match those things because suicide terrorists, rather than being sleepers who are just hidden in there, embedded in other countries, uh, it, it's more usually that they're people who have an empathy with something else that's going on with a region that's under foreign occupation. 
So they're kind of looking for uh, the wrong thing in many cases. So Spain did have these things. What they were lacking, uh, as happened with 9-11 as well, was, uh, was coordination, a, a working together of these uh, police and other government forces to uh, kind of bring together the information that they had and uh, sift it in a coherent way. Uh, so even uh, I mentioned metadata surveillance that that can't always profile terror, it can't always catch the right things. And why it works with marketing is, for example, Target can kind of pick up on what people are doing and send them ads and things through metadata because they follow consistent behaviors. With terrorism, people see uh, following certain behaviors, then their friends get killed, bombed, things like this. And then the terrorists may change, who live, may change their strategy and change their behaviors. So it may be difficult to track. Um, during the attack, they recognized the true culprits. At first, it was thought that this might be an attack perpetrated by a Basque separatist movement in Spain called the Escari uh, Te Escanuna, uh, Escasuna, es Escatasuna, not saying it correctly. Uh, the ETA. Now, thankfully, uh, the attack evidence led criminal justice um, personnel away from uh, wrongly accusing or pinning guilt for this attack to the ETA. So they correctly recognized culprits once they discovered a vehicle with uh, these Quranic messages played on a, on a tape and they started to put other pieces together. Uh, metadata surveillance, again, did not prevent the attack for mentions. I, uh, for reasons I mentioned. Uh, five people were arrested within 60 hours. Again, another 29 get arrested over some time. And unfortunately, a lot of, uh, many innocent people do get spied on and arrested. Now, there could be one side of this that sees it as understandable in the case that, look, a huge terror attack has just happened that's killed and injured hundreds of people and uh, even injured thousands of people. And uh, so some people got got arrested for the wrong reasons. Uh, on the other side, aside from a civil liberties, civil rights perspective, if uh, your rights aren't maintained, if this, this continuity of rights and um, innocence is a presumed, even in these cases, uh, then that may be a threat to them overall. Both sides are true. In the United States, Brandon Mayfield got arrested uh, by the FBI wrongly. He was a lawyer, he was a Muslim, got arrested um, wrongly by the FBI. They had been spying on his house. They had entered his home and his property without his permission. He was noticing things that were out of place, things that weren't right. And uh, and eventually they arrested him as well because of some of his daughter's Spanish homework. They thought that that tied him to the attack. They also thought they had a fingerprint, part of a fingerprint that belonged to him on one of the rucksacks on one of the bags that was discovered and one of the things inside one of the vehicles used in Spain. So we got arrested though. So that's not within Spain, but it showed that even the United States was uh, cracking down on these things and even arresting people uh, for, for totally the wrong reason absent the uh, the Fourth Amendment and other restrictions on that type of government overreach. Now, after the attack, of course, there's this trauma. There's this uh, unique um, sense in which you cannot go back to before the attack happened. There's increased surveillance. There was an inquiry launched to investigate the attack in November 2004. And then over some time, they eventually did uh, arraign and uh, do a trial, found a lot of the people gathered for that trial to be not guilty, then they did find uh, the perpetrators to be guilty. Uh, Spain did withdraw from Iraq. Now, some say that this was because of the attacks. Some say it wasn't. Um, for the terrorists who that was their goal, I don't think it matters either way as long as that goal was achieved. But really, that's... Um, that's what happened. Spain withdrew from Iraq and there has not been a subsequent terrorist attack since. Now, some probably wouldn't agree that that's the reason why there hasn't been a subsequent terrorist attack, but uh, you know, 
differing opinions um, on this matter are presented. Uh, there was also an increase in the National Police and the Guardia Silvo, um, increased counterterrorism forces, jobs uh, increased in these areas, uh, kind of a newer focus, kind of like post um, 1990s and post 9-11 United States. Spain, after M11, started focusing a lot more on counterterrorism. It's increased jobs in these areas, increased human resources in the area, it's increased uh, tax revenue in these areas. Uh, so there was a new focus on terrorism as uh, a real threat in kind of the modern world. And so Spain kind of had a, a, a refocus in that direction. Uh, the patterns of global terrorism, however, from the research of Feldman and Pape, they follow uh, foreign occupation. They go up and down with foreign occupation very clearly. Um, and so we see this with the, the general global pattern of suicide terrorism, particularly that with foreign occupation in the region, you see an increase of suicide terrorism. Doesn't matter what the religion is, doesn't matter what the economic situation is, doesn't matter what other features going on, the greatest single predictor is foreign occupation. Same thing particularly with Iraq. You can see here that after 2003, Iraq starts to really have uh, suicide terror attacks where they were not there previously uh, because of the invasion of U.S. and allies, um, including Spain. And then you also see a decrease. So if suicide terrorism is just unique to Islamic extremism, uh, you would probably see a lot more of it because there are 1.4 billion Muslims in the world. And uh, the fact of the matter is it doesn't explain the decreases, right? Iraq is still a Muslim uh, majority area and you see a major decrease after there's a backing down of the foreign occupation uh, of that region. So the conclusion, what, what needs to be taken away? Uh, the need for correct diagnosis is huge because if it's just enough, uh, if it's just we don't have enough airport security, we just don't have enough train security, we just don't have enough police, we just don't have enough uh, metadata surveillance, we just aren't listening to enough phone calls and, and emails. The government doesn't just doesn't have enough power over its citizens who are not terrorists to uh, smoke out and protect the ones, uh, protect them from the ones who are terrorists or outside attack. Um, now, some of that may have some validity to it. That being said, there needs to be a correct diagnosis and recognizing true patterns in global terrorism. As I've said, the single greatest predictor of suicide terrorism is not Islamic extremism. It's not the religion of Islam. It's not any particular religion. It's not economic uh, situations. It's not uh, random violence. It's foreign occupation. It's political and military control over lands that the terrorists prize that causes people to be willing to kill and die uh, to affect a certain result against modern democratic nation states. Uh, also, I think there ought to be some uh, uh, thought given to the protection of individual freedom and rights. Um, the United States has a Fourth Amendment, which has been severely eaten away by things like the Patriot Act that does not have any proof of uh, making Americans safer and in, in fact involved spying on Americans that was later revealed and uh, has continued to be uh, renewed. Now, Spain has other uh, similar things and it doesn't have, Spain does not have the cultural and legal protections of something like a Fourth Amendment. Uh, at least in the same kind of American tradition. So even more so, uh, Europe, European countries like Spain, France, places that have terrorist attacks, uh, if they don't diagnose correctly and they just think it's a failure of security, then they shift to just empowering uh, elites who provide security, which in a modern nation state is, is the government. Uh, they have a monopoly on those services. And so uh, the protection of individual rights uh, could get eaten away out of the, in the name of trying to uh, prevent terrorism, a worthy goal, which 
there always is a worthy goal. People don't usually say we're taking away individual rights for a bad reason. They try to say we're taking away individual rights for a good reason. They don't even characterize it that way. Uh, also, the, the I think some needed humility in, in the idea of metadata surveillance, that uh, trying to observe patterns is one thing, but trying to uh, say that those patterns can always, uh, or most of the time even, give us a, a substantial result in predicting and preventing terrorism is, is kind of a, a hubris. It's kind of an unearned arrogance uh, for those who, who advance metadata surveillance for security uh, to say that. And so I think there needs to be a, a needed uh, humility with regard to those things and recognizing that it's a very difficult thing to predict, especially when the things you're trying to predict make decisions, make choices and react. Um, it's not just the studying of a, a science. And so this is something that could be uh, learned. And when I say it's not the studying of a science, I mean, it's not like looking at uh, rocks and seeing how rocks, rocks will react chemically, physically, but they don't make decisions. And that's what makes social science uh, more difficult in that sense. And here are the references. Uh, Abrams uh, is a great scholar on this and the Al-Qaeda scorecard has a lot of great uh, resources and footnotes really walking through these things. I uh, just pointed those out. The, the Bin Laden uh, goal is to bankrupt the United States. That's uh, one of his speeches that I just included kind of as extra. Uh, Cole, Ghost Wars, great information, great book, great quotes from bin Laden himself and shows uh, kind of the development of his thought. Um, Dannenbaum has a ton of uh, information on the day of the attack itself. Uh, the Europe full text is the BBC link uh, where the responsibility was taken for the uh, attack. Uh, the Feldman and Pape book is a great book, tons of information, every fact, every claim is uh, backed up very carefully and then the Rose Murphy and Abrams is another great uh, work as well that has kind of an intermural, uh, intramural debate on uh, this topic from a kind of political science standpoint.